So what's up, West Road Sal here with another D Wrestling AD review. I have a lot of them, so I want to get through them. So let's get started. This time it's Full Impact Pro, Episode 12. So this is really early in the whole Full Impact Pro ordeal. This DVD, they were crowning the, the, the tag team champions for the first ever time. They were holding a tournament, but they were selling it like there was no brackets, no nothing. If you wanted to, you could just come out. And, and say I'm going to face the next person, whoever's on the list. So they started out with the Carnage Crew versus the Heartbreak Express. But before I start with that, I want to say that this show, the, the lighting was very dark. I mean, they, ha they had lights on the ring itself, but you, you can barely see any of the crowd people. I mean, it's like, it's like the venue told them you couldn't use our electricity. So the promotion had to bring their own flow lights, basically. The first match was the Carnage Crew versus the Heartbreak Express. Now, the the Carnage Crew, as well as one member of the Heartbreak Express, were all really had big a, a nice amount of weight on them. So it, it was kind of sloppy. They they did show off with their moves, so it's not like they couldn't do anything. Heel tactics, of course, from Heartbreak Express, maybe too much, too fast. You know, you like that nice pacing, and in this instance. I didn't think it, it it went well too good, you know. So I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. The Carnage Crew won with the Moonsault. Then the, the Don and Marcus came out to challenge Carnage Crew. But as soon as, like, the two two minutes into the match, Heartbreak Express comes out and helps Don and Marcus secure the win just by distracting the ref. One member of the Heartbreak Express went in, helped beat him up. So Don and Marcus got the win. I gave it a 2 out of 5 because there wasn't really anything to it. I mean, there was a couple of nice moves, maybe three or four, but it was way too short. Then we had Dunham Marcus, who won the last match, versus Jimmy Raven and Eddie Vegas. But, Jimmy Raven and Eddie Vegas came to, came to the end ramp, ran into the ring, and then said we're not fighting. They just teased it. So we so we, we changed all different to Roderick Strong and Jarrell Clark versus Homicide and Ver Verdell Walker. Now, this was, there was this... Slow start to the match, very tactical with the submission maneuvers, stuff like that. There was crazy, you can tell there was legitimate heat between Roderick Strong and Homicide. They were like, they were like really pushy with their moves, like really stiff and really like nasty, you could tell. Crazy brawling between these two, it was unbelievable. Stiff chops from Roderick Strong as usual when you know he's one with strikes. Roderick Strong and Jarrell Clark won. With the uh, Boston Crab, uh, they were hold, um, Darrell Clark was holding, I think, uh, Verdell Walker, so Roderick Strong made Homicide tap out. 3.5 through 4 out of 5. This match was epic with their, uh, with their, just the, the stiffness of it, the heat between the two. It was a good match. Next, we had Sauronaro and Spanky versus Steve Madison and James Gibson. Now, Spanky and J James, James Gibson. Well, James Gibson is Jamie Noble. On the independent circuit, he's a very well-known wrestler, you know. W made him look really bad. That's for another video. Uh, Spanky was the pro. Jamie Noble was the pro. Steve Madison and Salvinaro, they looked... I know Salvinaro, but he looked rookie, like uh, rookie material here. So it was basically like a, a pro and a rookie versus a pro and a rookie. Now, the match turned out that Steve Madison turns on Jamie Noble and says he wants a match next week, next, uh, next event, whatever, whatever that may be back then. There was pure wrestling in this match, nothing too fancy. If anything, it was standard wrestling, just very emphasized with, like, the technical aspects of it. The pace quickened up halfway through the match, but it was still technical, technical wrestling throughout. Same tactic as last match. Um, I think it was, a. Spanky hold, held Gibson, so he couldn't save the pin. I mean, you do it once in, in a car. You do it once in an event. You don't do it every match. So I give it a 3.5 out of 5. I mean, good match up to that spot where you just, you just like, you did it last match. Why are you doing it again? CM Punk was the next match, believe it or not, with Juan Juan. He comes out. They look like they're going to have a match, but it's just, the, but it's just a, a, a tease. That's what FIP did good with their with their they would bring wrestlers looking like they were gonna have a match because they set it up with the with the announcers saying what their name was and then they just talked in and wrestled. The um, next match was Jimmy Rave 
and Evan Starsmore with Aaron Jimmy Rave with Eddie Vegas versus Aaron Starsmore and Aaron F, Evan Starsmore and Aaron Epic. Uh, Evan and Aaron were newbies. The match went in two seconds. They were trying to put Jimmy Rave and Eddie Vegas over. 1.5 through 2 out of 5. I mean, you know, you have to put them over, but don't make it that obvious that you want to put them over, you know. At least put a little bit of defense in there from the rookies. I mean, we're like a, it was like a match from when Ryback first debuted in WWE, and three seconds flat out destroyed, you know. that This was that. We had Jimmy, Jimmy Raven, Eddie Vegas versus Dunn and Marcus. Now, Jimmy Raven, Eddie Vegas, as well, they won again against Dunn and Marcus. Combo is start of the match, but in this match, Dave Prezak, the manager of DP Associates, he interfered, cheap shots. So you know it was, it was going to their side. Waited, you waited a long time for uh, Dunn and Marcus' first tag. They were playing that up. So I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Submissions from uh, Jimmy Raven, Eddie Vegas, they were... They were um, exposing uh, weak limbs on Don and Marcus, you know. So I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It wasn't a bad match. It wasn't a great match. Ooh. So, CM Punk and Don Juan Juan versus Spanky and Salvinaro. I didn't... I forgot to tell you this before. I didn't know what Don Juan was. I really didn't. So, uh, there was no... There was no uh, luster to his tag team partner for me, you know. I gave it a 2.5 through 3 out of 5. A lot of heelish tactics, but a fun match, really. Um, there was nice moves. A pump handle backbreaker looked vicious. Uh, Duan Juan was working Salvador's arm. Then, oh yeah, there was a segment in this match where I forgot how they did it. It was on the rope somehow, but Duan Juan wasn't looking, so he kept hitting Punk. It was funny. The crowd was really into it. So I gave it a 2.5 through 3 out of 5. Now, to stray away from the tag teams for just a bit, we had Rain Man versus Jared Steele versus Antonio Banks, who, as you know, is MVP. Let me start this computer again so the light comes in. Um, MVP all the way in the get-go. He starts off really strong. First elimination comes really quickly, though. Jared Steele gets eliminated. Then it just slows down. Rain Man versus Antonio Banks. Quick pace, nice combos, chains involving all three and... Just the two, you know, it was it was nice. Three-way elimination, it wasn't like a triple threat, like one pin secures it all. The thing was, in the beginning of the match, they've done this before. They've stopped, a person has stopped a pin. But if you're not going to lose, don't stop the pin. A person will get eliminated, and then it'll just be you and the other guy. I don't know why they're doing it that way, but whatever. The last, the second to last match was, oh no, this was the last match. CM Punk... And Don Juan Juan versus Roderick Strong and Jarrell Clark versus Jimmy Rave and Eddie Vegas with Dave Prezak, of course. Before the match, Jimmy Rave and Eddie Vegas, as well as CM Punk and Juan Juan, were going nuts. They were, for some reason, they, they got agitated with each other, and they just started throwing the chairs in the crowd into the ring, and they started throwing plastic chairs. It was funny, but it made little to no sense, you know. It was one of those oddball things in the Excuse me, an independent wrestling. CM Punk's really good with crowd chemistry here too, as well as today. You know, he's he was working on the mic, excellent, excellent working on the mic. Eddie Vegas and Dwan Juan seemed a really good matchup because they both had like almost the same gimmicks. Dwan Juan was selling himself as a ladies' man, and Eddie Vegas, obviously Vegas in the last name, it's like almost the same thing. Roger Strong, CM Punk have a good one-on-one -on -one in this match. Great chemistry between the two. When we got to, to the last two, because CM Punk and Duan Juan were first eliminated, so it turned out to be Roger Strong and Jarrell Clark versus DP Associates. It's it, it came to like slow pace, but still technical, still tiff, mo stiff moves. It looked like they hurt. It turned out to be a little bit sloppy towards the end, but it was all right. I gave it a three point five through five out of five. Jimmy Raven had a Vegas one, so they so they got the tag team titles. The usual suspect's name is like they take the the, the tag teams through I, through FIP and put them in a tournament when there was no brackets, you know. It was strange how they did it, but it turned out alright. I just, it left a better taste in my mouth because the heels won the tag team tournament. But I guess that's alright considering it's like their, their, their first shows and they need to establish a good heel team. So they won. 
But at the end, uh, Dave Prezak, the manager, he gets Roger Strong's finisher as well as Jarrell Clark that they beat him up so badly. It's not even funny because Jimmy Raven, Eddie Vegas, as soon as they win, they run out. So Prezak gets the punishment. That was it for this pay-per-view. I hope you enjoyed my review. Uh, more to come. So rate, comment, subscribe. See you later. Peace.